Greetings and welcome back. Kamal here with yet another very interesting integral. We have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 plus cube root sine x. And the first thing I'd like to do is show that both integrals in the thumbnail are equal. That is, if we replace sine x by cosine x, we'll still get the same integral. And for that, let me just perform a phase shift going from the x realm to the pi by 2 minus x realm. And what that does is give me now the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 plus cube root of sine of pi by 2 minus x. Terribly sorry about that. And we know that sine of pi by 2 minus x is the cosine function, so that means we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 plus cube root cosine x. And what exactly are we supposed to do now? Well, if we had 1 plus cosine x, that would have been quite easy, right? But that's not the case we're dealing with. We have 1 plus cube root cosine x. So I'm about to expand by a very interesting version of 1. In this case, I need 1 plus cosine rather 1 minus cosine to the 1 third of x plus cosine to the 2 thirds of x divided by 1 minus cosine to the 1 third of x plus cosine to the 2 third of x. That's the very interesting version of one I wanted to expand by. And what exactly is the utility of this move? Well, notice now in the denominator what we have is 1 cubed plus cosine to the 1 third of x cubed as well, which of course equals 1 plus cosine x. And this implies that the target integral i can be split up into three integrals using the linearity of the integration operator, of course. So we have the target integral i equal to the integral from 0 to pi by 2. Uh, first up, we have 1 by 1 plus cosine x dx. Then we have a negative sign here, integral 0 to pi by 2 cosine to the 1 third of x divided by 1 minus cosine x dx plus integral 0 to pi by 2 of cosine to the 2 third of x dx divided by 1 minus, oh wait, it was a 1 plus cosine x. Terribly sorry about that. Anyway, now we have three different integrals to evaluate. First up, the integral i sub 1 is pretty damn easy. All we have to do is expand by a factor of 1, which in this case should be 1 minus cosine x. And in the denominator, we have 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x dx. And that means in the denominator, we have 1 minus cosine square x and upstairs we have 1 minus cosine x and 1 minus cosine square is of course sine square. So we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of 1 minus cosine x divided by sine square x dx. So expanding this gives us 1 by sine square which is cosecant square x minus cosine x divided by sine x times 1 by sine x, so that of course is the cotangent times the cosecant, so we have cotangent x times cosecant x dx. So the integration here is pretty straightforward. We have a negative cotangent x term plus a cosecant x term with the limits being 0 and pi by 2. And to evaluate this thing, let me just expand the limits, uh, expand the functions we have. We have Cotangent is cosine by sine, so we have 1 minus cosine x divided by sine x with the limits being 0 and pi by 2. And as x approaches pi by 2, we have 1 minus 0 divided by 1, that's 1, minus the limit as x tends to 0 of 1 minus cosine x divided by sine x from the right, of course. And to evaluate this, we're just going to invoke L'Hopital's rule, so we have 1 minus limit as x approaches 0 from the right, of sine x divided by cosine x, right? So that gives us a 0. And this implies that i sub 1 is just 1. i sub 2 is quite interesting. Again, we're going to expand by 1 minus cosine x first up. So we have integral 0 to pi by 2 
cosine to the one third of x times one minus cosine x divided by one minus cosine squared x dx. So this means that we have the integral from zero to pi by two of cosine to the one third of x minus cosine to the four thirds of x all being multiplied by sine to the negative two of x. Okay, cool. So expanding the integrand and using the linearity of the integration operator, we have a couple of really interesting integrals. First up, we have integral zero to pi by two, terribly sorry about that, of cosine to the one third of x times sine to the negative two of x dx minus integral zero to pi by two of cosine to the four thirds of x times sine to the negative two of x dx. And now to invoke one of our favorite special functions, the beta function, whereby we know now the beta function with complex arguments u and v is defined as twice the integral from zero to pi by two of sine to the two u minus one of x times cosine to the two v minus one of x dx. So for the first one of these integrals, we have in fact two u minus one equal to one third, which implies that u here equals four thirds divided by two is two thirds, right? So we have u equal to two thirds. And for this thing here, we have two u minus one equal to four thirds. So that's gonna be seven sixths. So yeah, that's seven by six. And for both cases, v, we have v equal to what? Two v is supposed to be equal to minus one, so v here is just going to be equal to negative one half for both the integrals. Okay, cool. So this implies that i sub two equals one half factored out, and we're left with the beta function evaluated at two thirds and negative one half minus the beta function evaluated at seven sixths and negative one half. Now to expand the beta function in terms of the gamma function, we have one half times gamma seven, no wait, it's two thirds, times gamma negative one half divided by gamma sum of the arguments. Same thing over here, we have gamma seven by six times gamma negative one half divided by gamma seven by six terribly sorry about that not much better minus one half whatever you get what i'm trying to write okay so what exactly was gamma negative one half mm. let's recall the gamma one half which is of course gamma negative one half plus one so by the recursion formula for the gamma function we have negative one by two times gamma negative one by two this thing here is supposed to be root pi, so this implies that gamma negative one half equals negative two root pi. And that, of course, can be factored out. So we have, let me just get back to the color purple. We have i sub two equal to negative two root pi divided by two, with the twos canceling out quite nicely. And we're left with gamma two thirds divided by What's two thirds minus one half? This is the difficult part of the, of the video because I'm I'm not very good at math. Uh, what is this thing? I think it's supposed to be four by six minus three by six. Is, it's, is that how you solve it, right? So that means you have one by six. Okay. Minus gamma uh, seven by six divided by what do we have? Seven by six minus one by two, that's three by six. So that's gamma four by six or gamma two thirds, correct? Okay, cool. And of course, for the integral i sub three, we follow pretty much the same approach. We apply the beta function and then the gamma function and we perform that horrible, horrible addition of fractions. It was horrible, man. I don't know how I made it out alive. I'm just glad it's over. Anyway, 
we're about to compile results now. So the target integral i equaled i sub 1 minus i sub 2 plus i sub 3. So this implies that i here equaled i sub 1 was just nicely equal to 1. Then from i sub 2 and 3, we factor out root pi. And there's a negative sign here, so plus sign there. And what exactly are we left with? Well, we have gamma 2 by 3 divided by gamma 1 by 6 minus gamma 7 by 6 divided by gamma 2 thirds again. Okay, cool. And now for the result of i sub 3, we're still going to have that negative sign. So it's negative gamma 5 by 6 divided by gamma 1 by 3. And just a little bit of writing space is required. And then we have a plus sign now, gamma 4 by 3 divided by gamma 5 by 6. So we have this beautiful array of gamma functions, which is very satisfying. I mean, I just love looking at this. Cue that meme, I've been staring at this for three hours or something like that. It's that kind of feeling. This is just beautiful. I absolutely love this. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I hope you learned something from the video. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. And in case you like the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting my content on Patreon. All links are in the description box. Thank you. Have a nice day. See you next time.